Welcome to B&B RV. We're at 8101 East 40th Avenue in Denver. Phone number is 303-322-6013. We're going to walk you around our Mercedes diesel. This is a 24T model. Has twin beds in the back that can convert to a king bed. We'll see that as we get inside. We'll start going around the outside here. We'll show you all the compartments, how everything works on the outside. This is where the propane is housed. The propane is not a self-serve thing. That's something that they fill for you. So if you need that filled while you're out, you can get it at truck stops, campgrounds, some U-Hauls, places like that. Any place that does propane can fill that for you. They're just built into the, to the unit. This is a dump on this particular model. So your hose is gonna be stored in here. There's a little port here that you can open up and um, allow you to put the hose through here. So you can put your hose, your dump hose comes up through here, take this cap off and hook it onto here. Dump hose goes down into the dump at the campground. After you get that hooked up, you're gonna pull this black lever, that's your black tank, for your toilet. Pull that, let that completely drain. When that's done, close that. Then open your gray tank for your sinks and your shower. That's soapy water, it'll kind of rinse out that hose for you when you're done. When you're done with that, close that, unhook your uh, dump hose, put the cap back in the porthole, and you're all done dumping. When you get done dumping, what you're gonna do is go back inside, and in the bathroom, we'll have a packet of uh, chemicals. There's a little pouch. You're gonna put that pouch in the toilet, flush it down with a little bit of water, and that'll make it smell better and um, help it break down a little quicker and biodegrade. Back in this compartment, we have a, a little shower, an outside shower for you to use. And then this is your water hookup. There's another switch. This switch in here is another water pump switch so that if you're out here and you want to turn that pump on, you can. What you're going to do on this particular one is this is your city water connection. You're going to hook up your hose here and then this arrow pointing up is normal use. Over to the left it says tank. That's to fill your onboard tank and straight down is city. So if you're hooked up to city water, turn that straight down. Um, so turn it to the left to fill your onboard water. Up above you'll see another water connection and that's just to hook up a hose. It sprays into your uh, black tank for your holding tank to help rinse that out because when you go and dump that tank, sometimes particles will collect on the sensors in there and even though it's empty, it doesn't show empty because things are hanging up on those sensors. That'll help you rinse that out. If you want to do that, you can hook the hose here and that'll rinse that out for you as well. The other item in this compartment is your electric. So if you're plugging into a campground, you're gonna take this cord out, plug it in at the campground, and where you plug this in, there's gonna be another breaker. You wanna make sure that that breaker is also on. So if you plug this in and go in and you don't have any power, that breaker is probably off where you plugged it in. And one easy way to tell if you have power when you hook up to electricity or when you have the generator on is if you have lights on your microwave. So if your microwave lights up, you've got power 110. And the only thing you need this power for is your microwave, your air conditioner, and your outlets. You don't want to run your microwave and your air conditioner at the same time because they can blow the circuit. So if you're going to run your microwave and you have your air conditioner on, just turn that microwave off while you run the air, or turn the air off, I'm sorry, while you run the microwave. It's not going to run it very long. This has a large storage compartment in the back. We're going to include blocks, which we can probably see from the other side a little easier. Some camp chairs. There's a water hose that's an RV hose. It's lined so that it won't taste like hose. It's potable water. A cable for cable TV and a bag of gloves for dumping if you so want to use it. And we have lights in there so you can see in at night if you're getting into your storage. I'll show you the blocks on the other side of that same storage. We do have a ladder on the back. We use that to get up and inspect the roof every time it comes back. That's not an item for the renter to use unless it's an emergency. 
If you do need to get up there in an emergency, be very careful because that roof is very slippery when it's wet. It's not a patio or a place to hang out. Uh, this is the other side of the storage. So one of the things that we include is a set of these blocks. As you can see, there's three levels. So whatever's low, if your back is low, the side is low, wherever you're low, you're just going to set this down on the ground and drive up on one or two or whatever you need to get level. There's a level inside. We can show you that when we go in. That makes it, uh, makes it easy to see what you're doing as you're driving up on the blocks. You don't need another person outside. Again, it has another storage light in there. The next compartment is just where your generator is housed. That all runs from inside, so you really don't need to access that. This one is just another storage compartment for your items. You'll notice in the very back, there's a box that has some wires coming out of it. That is a control panel for your slide out room. So as you're putting units into this compartment, you want to be real careful that you don't throw something up against that, bump it, tear those wires out so that the um, slide out quits working. Outside, you've got a couple of outlets if you needed to have power out here for any appliance you want to plug in. If you're plugged into electricity, you have the generator on, those work. A couple of speakers out here for you. This is just a small, shallow compartment um, that you won't need to use. This step will come out automatically when you open the door. And I'll show you a switch for that inside. The awning is up overhead. There's a switch right inside for that. Awning comes out to cover your patio area. That's nice to sit out under the awning. If you're enjoying that, that's fine. If you're going to leave for any reason, do not leave the awning out. You want to make sure you put that awning in. Anytime you're not there sitting under it, a gust of wind comes up, it's going to tear that awning right off the side. So let's go inside and check this out. Right inside the door, we have a couple of switches here to tell you about. This particular one is for storing the unit. So you want this red light on 100% of the time. If you see that red light off, click this back on. You need to have that. That's your house batteries. This has two house batteries and a separate battery for the car to start it. This is, um, I can't read. This is your awning. So extend or retract for your awning. Anytime you want to put that awning out, just hit the extend, put it all the way out or all the way in. Do not leave that awning out unless you're sitting out under it. And then you have a couple of light switches here to get in and out. Um, inside and out to make it a little easier to see as you're getting in and out. Right above the door here is your, com your, uh, your whole control panel. At the very top left is your generator. You're just going to hit start to start the generator. So just hold that down until your generator starts. You need generator for your microwave, your air conditioner, and any outlets. The um, propane is what powers the generator. Generator runs off your propane, so you'll want to just keep an eye on your propane to make sure you have enough of that to keep your generator going. And to do that, you have all your gauges here. So your propane is this first gauge, and it'll tell you how much propane you have. Your battery is the second gauge. We don't encourage relying on that gauge. With the deep cycle batteries, they're good, 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 bad. So they take a long time to drain down, but they take a long time to fill back up. So if you're camping and dry camping where you don't have power or electricity, you'll need to run your generator or drive each day to keep those batteries charged up. So if you're going to go out on a trip and you're not going to have electricity and you're going to be boondocking, let us know. We can help you know how to manage that. You have a fresh water, a black tank, and a gray tank. So anytime those fill up, they'll light up, and when you empty them, they'll drop back to zero. If this black tank doesn't go back to empty after you dump the tank, it's because things hang up on those sensors. So if you dump your tank and that still isn't empty, there is a bucket in the bathroom with some cleaning supplies. Take that bucket and fill it with water and dump it in, or hook your hose up out where we showed you the water section on the outside to that sprayer that sprays out the inside. If it doesn't bother you, you don't need to worry about it. Just know I just dumped it. It's just not showing empty. 
this step on and off, if this is on, every time you in, open the entry door and close it, every time you open and close, this step's going to go in and out. With it off, that step will just stay out, and then when you start the engine with the door closed, it's going to pull that step in automatically. So I just recommend leaving step off. Patio on and off is an outside light. Ceiling on and off is in the inside lights on the ceiling. And this unit has a slide out up front, so to hit extend or retract, you just press extend and the wall will go out. This one we've upgraded to have the two recliners. So up front there's a recliner, pull the handle on the side of that recliner for it to flip up. On the floor, we have a couple of places for a table. As soon as that slide gets all the way to the wall, just let go of the switch. There's a table that's stored in the, in the closet toward the back, and it just goes into the uh, frame on the floor. Table goes on top of the pole, and um, these will swivel around. The two chairs up front will swivel around, so you can have the table here, or you can sit at the recliners and have the table there. Let's check out the cockpit in this, and then we'll move toward the back. Up here in a cockpit, this is built on the Mercedes diesel. So one of the nice parts about the Mercedes is you're going to get a lot better mileage. And these coaches, most of our customers get between 18 and 24 miles to the gallon on their trip on these. So you've got an adjustment for your mirrors here, your windows, lights. Everything's pretty standard to what you would expect in a cockpit. You have the automatic transmission here. When you're down into drive, when this is all the way down into drive, let me start this up, I'll show you. When you have this down in drive, you can shift up or down. You have a plus and a minus. So if you're in the mountains and you don't want to have to brake coming back down the mountains, you can let the engine and the transmission help you. So as you're coming back down, you don't want to have to brake all the way. So just push this to the side and you'll see it goes from drive and then it goes to four and to three. So that'll shift down every time you paddle that to the left. Be careful when you're coming down and you definitely don't want to do two at a time. You want to just do that carefully because this does tend to wrap it up quite a bit. So it'll add a lot of RPMs. You just want to make sure your RPMs aren't too high. And you may need to break some too as you're doing it to help it get you slowed down. And once you're slowed down, then that should help you uh, not have to break all the way down the hill. And you can just paddle it back up to drive as you get down to the bottom of the hill. Everything else is pretty standard up here. There is a backup camera built in. There's side cameras as well. So when you turn your blinker on to the left or the right, it'll turn that camera on. So you you can in the screen here you can see what's right beside you the mirrors work great the bottom mirrors on the side also show you the blind spot but that's just an additional feature to uh, help you see what's back there up above we have another sleeping area in this unit so this bed just pulls straight down there's a ladder here that will just clip into these two spots so that you can uh, easily get up and down. And there's a privacy curtain that Velcro's to cover off that front area for more privacy. We have these curtains up, but you have a window on each side. If you'd like that, um, open for more light during the day and then curtains for privacy at night. This also has a shade up top. It has a sh uh, screen as well. Whether you want that uh, light or don't want the light for the heat, you can have that open or closed. These um, recliners have a little handle on the side to pop up the recliner. In the cabinet here, we include a fly swatter, a lighter, some of our custom playing cards, and then every one of our units we've written a manual for. So anything to do with this coach is in this manual. So if you need to refer it, Refer to it for any questions while you're out. This will answer your questions. In the kitchen, we upgrade everything in these. Um, this is a stainless steel upgraded sink. This has a cooktop. 
This cooktop's a little different than some potentially. What you do with this is you turn it to the little light sim symbol and then you hold this in and while you hold it in you light it with a match or a lighter which is why you include that up there in the cupboard. So either of those you just turn to the light, hold it in and then once it's lit you just turn it on. Has the microwave underneath. Um, one easy way to tell if your electricity is working is if there's lights on on the microwave. That works just like at home. Microwave and air conditioner are the only two things that you really need electricity for. So either plugging in or running the generator. This has a separate freezer and fridge. This is all an automatic fridge so it will run on propane or electricity. So if you see this orange light on, that means it's running on propane. If the orange light is flashing, somehow it went out. Turn it off, turn it back on to auto, and it'll relight itself. After 30 to 60 seconds, if it can't relight, that flashing light will come back on. You're not likely to see that, but if you do, you'll know you just don't want to leave it off for hours. If you plug into electricity or start the generator, the orange light will go off and all you'll have is the green light. So on electricity, it just says, hey, I'm on. The only time you have to be worried is if you see that orange light flashing. The bathroom's right across, and it has a couple of features. It has a double door to get into the bathroom. So you can open the door and swing it open to the back and swing it open, and it latches to the front as well. Inside the bathroom, we've got the toilet, sink, shower. Just press the pedal on the toilet to flush it. <clears throat> And then we have toilet paper and chemical in here. Anytime you flush and drain your black trank, you're going to come in and down your toilet, you're going to put a little pouch. There's a packet of chemicals in here and little pouches. Throw a pouch down the toilet and just leave that in there. Flush it down with a little water. That'll help it smell better and uh, help the toilet paper break down a little quicker. The wall in here has a control for the water heater. So this is an instant hot water heater. What you want to do on this is it confuses people because there's a red light that makes it look like it's on. But if you press this button, then this green light will come on and tell you that, okay, I'm on. And this screen will come on up here to show you the temperature. This just goes up to 123 degrees. You'll want to just leave it at that. That's the best temperature for this and it's automatic. So as long as that's on, then your heat's working. And then to shut that back off, you just press that button again, but this red light will always be on. The shower, the shower head has an on and an off. So you can uh, get wet, turn it off, soap up, save water in the shower. This wardrobe closet is where we spoke of the table. So your table and your leg is stored in here. That's what goes up front in front of your chairs or your recliners. This bedroom has two twin beds or this piece will slide out and become a king bed. So when you slide this all the way out, there's another piece that is stored on the side here that fits in here for a king bed. It's real popular feature in this unit. You slide this back in. This has a TV on the wall here. Your thermostat is on the wall here. They put a thermostat in with multiple zones. But this unit only has one zone. So when you turn this on, you just want to leave it on. Um, you don't change the zone. So the only thing that you would be changing is the mode. And you're either going to go furnace or cool or off. And um, that's all you really need to do. Don't worry about the programming. Up or down to set the temperature. And then just press that again to turn it off. So just on and off and change the mode to what you want. And the temperature, just leave it on zone one because there is only one zone. The back of this has an exit on that side, so if you can't get out the front somehow, you can get out the side there. And it has an overhead vent as well for a power vent. So any windows or doors that you have open that acts like an attic fan, it'll pull all that cool air in 
and um, cool off the whole coach with that fan. This is the 24T built on a Mercedes diesel. Thanks for visiting.